So this is the mirror maze experiment. So what I want you to do, you're gonna need some pictures of mazes for this one. Don't have to be particularly complicated and you can see a selection in front of me here. In fact, this is out of one of my books, one of my science books, I've got a picture of a maze there. And as you can see, I've got some much bigger versions here which are a bit easier to do. I also recommend having more than one copy of each. As you can see, I've got three copies of each sheet. It's three there, three there. First thing I want you to do, because I don't know what maze you're going to use, is get a pen or pencil, use what you want, and just look at the maze. And again, don't make it too complicated. I don't want you to use a complicated maze. And just draw the lines around the maze the way you need to go. Now, these are what we call puzzle mazes, okay? There are different sorts of mazes, but this is a puzzle maze because obviously sometimes there's a bit of a puzzle to see where you have to go. This one's a bit of an easy puzzle, to be honest. So let's see how easy I find this one. That was a bit too easy, wasn't it? Let's try this one, looks a bit more tricky. Oh, that's not too difficult, is it? Easy. Well, this one's a bit more tricky, I reckon. The cartoonist who did this for me, he's been a bit fiendish with this one. All right, let's have a look, okay. He's taking me around the houses with this one, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Jolly good. Right, so that's with just looking at the mazes, directly at them and having a go. And notice I deliberately didn't want complicated mazes, especially the first two. And you might choose just to use some pretty easy ones there. But I just wanted to show you, I can actually do mazes. So I'm going to leave that there. Now you want some fresh sheets. So here we go with a new one. I've got a new one there if I'm going to use it. This time though, a difference comes into it. I just You can do that yourself. I want you to do that first with an ordinary maze. And now here's where the difference is. You need a mirror, a hand mirror. I'm just using one of these sort of double-sided plastic mirrors that we often use in schools and things like that. But any hand mirror will do. I'm sure you can find one at home. And what you need to do is hold it in a rather peculiar way. I want you to hold it against your head like it's the peak on a peaked cap. And in fact, you're gonna to have to get right down to the table. Now, what I normally do is rest my elbows on the table. And the way I'm holding this, and you're not gonna be able to see me over there, but I'm gonna hold this so that I bend it down and I'm gonna be looking up at all times. You can see me now looking up into it, but I'm looking up to see when I can see the pattern of the maze in the mirror, the reflection in other words. Okay, hello there. Now, holding it there, I can see the reflection. Actually, I can't see the reflection. My big nose in the way. Well, there you go. But I can see the reflection. Now, what I want to do, without looking down, I want to see if I can do the maze just as easily as before. Okay? So, looking down just so I can see where to start. That's the one I'm going to start with. I might put my elbow on the sheet of paper to stop it moving. Here we go. Uh, so I can see the reflections, remember. I know you can't quite see my eyes very well, but I'm not looking down, I'm looking up into the mirror. So remember, you're holding the mirror up like this. You mustn't look down at any time, apart from when you're gonna place the pen at the start position, okay? So you hold it down, you put your pen where you wanna start, and then up into the mirror, look at the reflection and trace the maze looking at the reflection only and see how you get on. Good luck. Okay, how'd you get on? Well, I've got to be honest, I didn't get on terribly well. While you were away, I had to go at the first one. But look at the very first time I did it, when I looked at it, just straight at it and I did it. Not too bad, was it? A bit wiggly, I know, but the lines weren't too bad. Now look at the version I did using the mirror. Hmm, a bit crazy around here, what's going on? Right, let's have another go and I'll see how I got on with my other one. Remember, your mazes are almost definitely gonna be different to mine, so of course I don't know how you did, I'm showing you how I did on mine, but the point is, that was pretty easy, that was harder, it seemed. The funny thing was that I knew where to go, 
but there was something going on with my hand. I wonder if you noticed the same thing. Let's see if you can see it happening this time and actually do the next one in front of you. Wish me luck. Here we go. Now again, I'm gonna look down first to place the pencil where I want to start. I think I'm gonna stick my elbow there just to stop the paper sliding around, just in case it wants to. I'm not, remember, I'm not looking down at any time. I'm looking into the reflection only. But let me just quickly look down to place my pen there to start off. Right, up into the mirror, not looking down. See how we go on with this one. Oop. Oop. Dear, dear, dear. I can't even remember where to go on this one. Oop. I think, oh, maybe not. I've gone the wrong way entirely. Anyway, I'm not doing too well on that one, am I? I wonder if I should try even the other one. I think I'll give up there. So, what's going on? Again, like me, you probably made some mistakes on this one. Your maze would have almost certainly looked different from mine if you were using these sorts of printed out ones, unless you use the maze from my book, of course. But the thing I know you would have noticed almost certainly, or at least most of you, would have been if you'd done it by eye, like I first did, just looking straight at it without any mirrors in the way, you probably went through your maze much more easily than when you use the mirror. And again, you can see if I compare them, let me bring them next to each other like this. If you can compare them, remember that was the first one I did pretty quickly if you remember. That's the second one, wiggling all over the place. And again, I actually got it totally wrong the second time on that anyway, didn't I? But otherwise, even forgetting the fact I went wrong, sometimes you notice I actually went in a totally wrong direction, didn't I? And I'm sure you did the same thing too. So what's going on? Well, you probably notice quite quickly that when you look in a mirror, when you do what we might call vertical lines compared to you, in other words, away from or towards you, the reflection did the opposite. So in other words, if you're doing your drawing and you wanted to do a line towards you, in the mirror you would have seen it go away from you. Now your brain isn't used to that because your brain was using two things to understand what was going on. One was vision, you were looking, particularly when we did it without the mirror. The other thing was the senses which are built into our muscles and our joints and the bits that link the muscles to the joints, called the tendons, they're the things that link our muscles to the bones. They've got little sensors built in all over your body. And it's called a kinesthetic sense, okay? And it's how your brain knows where all your body is. For example, if you stick your arm out, you put it anywhere you want, and suddenly you want to touch your nose, it's pretty easy to do that, isn't it? You can put anyone you like, pretty quick. You can do it really fast because your brain keeps a track of where everything is and it does that in that with that kinesthetic sense. And part of the kinesthetic sense is these little sensors called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors which are all over your body. Tons of them. So whenever you're doing this experiment when you pull downwards of course you want it to come down. You look in your brain said okay you want to do this maze. Draw down and you can see with your eyes, you're moving down, and you could feel with your arm, feel with those little sensors I've just described, what was happening. So in other words, everything was fine. You could see and feel the same thing. And your brain likes that, that's what it's used to. As soon as you introduce the mirror, of course, things go a bit haywire. When you looked in the mirror, whenever you went vertical direction, it did the opposite in the mirror. So your brain thought, huh, just a minute. I'm wanting to pull my hand one way, and it looks like it's going in another and so confusion set in and you made mistakes and it obviously went more slowly. Even sometimes when you're going horizontally, which actually does look okay in the mirror, when you move your hand one way, it moves the same in the mirror, your brain was actually already trying to learn, okay, maybe I should be doing the opposite, and sometimes you actually go the opposite direction horizontally. And that's not because it looks different, it's just your brain thinks, oh well, I better start doing the opposite then, and gets it wrong because it doesn't need to do it for the horizontal. It only needs to go opposite for that direction, and that's why you have a lot more trouble doing the maintenance. Okay, what about other things you could try, variables? Well, the obvious one straight away, of course, is different designs of maze, 
For example, these mazes I drew, had drawn here, these all have vertical and horizontal lines going either that way or that way. Over here I've got a couple of other designs that are rather weird and wacky. Let's move these out of the way. Which have, I don't need to look, you, need you to see detail, just have a look. Very different sorts of designs. So these have got diagonal lines. Still a maze. So this one's a really easy one again, you, so there, I use my finger. That one looks a bit more tricky, doesn't it? So that's diagonal lines in the maze. So here's polygonal mazes, okay? So they've got angles all over the place on this one. I wonder if that'd be easier to do or harder to do. So in other words, different design, design mazes. What about putting a time limit on things? Now, I didn't measure the time in this. I mean, I noticed how long it took me to do it. How about setting yourself a challenge of thinking, right, I've got to be able to do it in, say, 15 seconds and see how quickly you can do it. Because after a while, your brain actually gets used to this a little bit and you will get a bit better at it, particularly if you take your time and go slowly. So I wonder what will happen if you say, nope, got to do it really fast and see what happens. Actually, I wonder what happens if you actually deliberately go even more slowly. Do you think that would start tricking your brain again? Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about if you use the same, of course, don't forget I made several copies. What about if you use the same one, but this time turn it around and do it the other way up? Do you think that would make any difference? Do you think it would make it easier or harder? Or what about if I turn it sideways and do the maze that way around? Now, remember, getting maze designs aren't that difficult. There's lots of books that have this sort of thing in. You can make your own up. They're not that hard, particularly really simple things like this. And even books, I, my book has them in, for example, internet, your library. I'm sure you won't have any problem getting some designs unless you want to draw your own. But have some fun with it. Uh -huh.